An Irishman Foresees His Death by William Butler Yeats Read for LibriVox by David Doty I know that I shall meet my fate Somewhere among the clouds above Those that I fight I do not hate Those that I guard I do not love My country is Kiltartan Cross My countrymen Kiltartan's poor No likely end could bring them loss or leave them happier than before. Nor law nor duty bade me fight, nor public men nor cheering crowds. A lonely impulse of delight drove to this tumult in the clouds. I balanced all, brought all to mind. The years to come seemed waste of breath, a waste of breath the years behind, in balance with this life, this death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beatrice by Sarah Teasdale Read for LibriVox.org by Squid Vajlakova Found at frisco-squid.blogspot.com Beatrice Send out the singers. Let the room be still. They have not eased my pain or brought me sleep. Close out the sun. For I would have it dark that I may feel how black the grave will be. The sun is setting, for the light is red. And you are outlined in a golden fire, like Ursula upon an altar screen. Come. Leave the light and sit beside my bed, for I have had enough of saints and prayers. Strange broken thoughts are beating in my brain. They come and vanish, and again they come. It is the fever driving out my soul, and death stands waiting by the heiress there. Ornella, I will speak, for soon my lips shall keep a silence till the end of time. You have a mouth for loving, listen then. Keep tryst with love before death comes to tryst. For I, who die, could wish that I had lived a little closer to the world of men, not watching, always, through the blazoned panes that show the world in chilly greens and blues, and grudge the sunshine that would enter in. I was no part of all the troubled crowd that moved beneath the palace windows here, and yet, sometimes a knight in shining steel would pass and catch the gleaming of my hair, and wave a mailed hand and smile at me, whereat I made no sign and turned away, affrighted, and yet glad and full of dreams, ah, dreams and dreams that asked no answering. I should have wrought to make my dreams come true, but all my life was like an autumn day, full of grey quiet and a hazy peace. What was I saying? All is gone. It seemed but now I was the little child who played within a garden long ago. Beyond the walls the festival trumpets blared. Perhaps they carried some Madonna by with tossing ensigns in a sea of flowers, a painted virgin with a painted child, who saw for once the sweetness of the sun, before they shattered an altered niche where tapers smoke against the windy gloom. I gathered roses redder than my gown and played that I was Saint Elizabeth, whose wand had turned roses in her hands. And as I played, a child came through the gate, a boy who looked at me without a word, as though he saw stretch far behind my head long lines of radiant angels row on row. That day we spoke a little, timidly, and after that I never heard the voice that sang so many songs for love of me. He was content to stand and watch me pass, to seek for me at matins every day, where I could feel his eyes the while I prayed. I think if he yet stretched his hands to me, or moved his lips to say a single word, I might have loved him. He had wondrous eyes. Ornella 
Are you there? I cannot see. Is every one so lonely when she dies? The room was filled with lights, with waving lights. Who are the men and women round the bed? What have I said, Ronella? Have they heard? There was no evil hidden in my life, and yet, and yet, I would not have them know. Am I floating in a mist of light? Oh, lift me up and I shall reach the sun. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. By the Arnell by Oscar Wilde. Read for LibriVox.org by Joe Brenneman. The oleander on the wall grows crimson in the dawning light, though the great shadows of the night lie yet on Florence like a pall. The dew is bright upon the hill, and bright the blossoms overhead, but ah, the grasshoppers have fled, the little attic song is still. Only the leaves are gently stirred by the soft breathing of the gale, and in the almond-scented vale the lonely nightingale is heard. The day will make thee silent soon, O nightingale, sing on for love, while yet upon the shadowy grove Splintered the arrows of the moon. Before, across the silent lawn, In sea-green mist the morning steals, And to love's frightened eyes reveals The long white fingers of the dawn. Fast climbing up the eastern sky To grasp and slay the shuddering night, All careless of my heart's delight, Or if the nightingale should die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Clod and the Pebble by William Blake Read for LibriVox.org by Leon Meyer Love seeketh not itself to please, Nor for itself hath any care, But for another gives its ease, And builds a heaven in hell's despair. So sung a little clod of clay, Trodden with the cattle's feet, But a pebble of the brook Warbled out these meters meet. Love seeketh only self to please, To bind another to its delight, Joys in another's loss of ease, And builds a hell in heaven's despite. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Egotist by Ambrose Bierce Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett Egotist Megaseph chosen to serve the state in the halls of legislative debate, one day with his credentials came to the Capitol's door and announced his name. The doorkeeper looked with a comical twist of the face at the eminent egotist and said, Go away, for we settle here all manner of questions, naughty and queer, and we cannot have, when the speaker demands, to know how every member stands, a man who to all things under the sky assents by eternally voting, I... End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This is a LibriVox recording. All the LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Foreign Lands by Robert Louis Stevenson Up into the cherry tree who should climb but little me? I held a trunk with both my hands, and looked abroad on foreign lands. I saw the next door garden lie, adorned with flowers before my eye, and many pleasant places more that I had never seen before. If I could find a higher tree, farther and farther I should see, to where the grown-up river slips into the sea among the ships, to where the roads on either hand lead onward into fairyland, where all the children dine at five, and all the playthings come alive. And a poem. This reading is recorded by Jimmy No Sum in 2007, Guangzhou, China. Futility by Wilfred Owen. Read for LibriVox.org by Caroline Fody on April 10, 2007, in Baltimore, Maryland. 
move him into the sun. Gently its touch awoke him once, at home, whispering of fields unsown. Always it woke him, even in France, until this morning and this snow. If anything might rouse him now, the kind old sun will know. Think how it wakes the seeds, woke once the clays of a cold star. Our limbs so dear achieved, our sides full-nerved, still warm, too hard to stir. Was it for this the clay grew tall? Oh, what made fatuous sunbeams toil to break earth's sleep at all? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O oh, Gray and Tender is the Rain by Lizette Woodworth Reese. Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett. O oh, Gray and Tender is the Rain that drips, drips on the pane. A hundred things come in the door, the scent of herbs, the thought of yore. I see the pool out in the grass, a bit of broken glass. The red flag's running wet and straight, down to the little flapping gate. Lombardy poplars tall and three across the road I see. There is no loveliness so plain as a tall poplar in the rain. But oh, the hundred things and more that come in at the door. The smack of mint, old joy, old pain, caught in the gray and tender rain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Grief of a Girl's Heart by Lady Gregory Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Clett O Donal Og, if you go across the sea, bring myself with you and do not forget it, and you will have a sweetheart for fair days and market days, and the daughter of the King of Greece beside you at night. It is late last night. The dog was speaking of you. The snipe was speaking of you in her deep marsh. It is you are the lonely bird through the woods, and that you may be without a mate until you find me. You promised me, and you said a lie to me, that you would be before me where the sheep are flocked. I gave a whistle and three hundred cries to you, and I found nothing there but a bleeding lamb. You promised me a thing that was hard for you, a ship of gold under a silver mast, twelve towns with a market in all of them, and a fine white court by the side of the sea. You promised me a thing that is not possible, that you would give me gloves of the skin of a fish, that you would give me shoes of the skin of a bird, and a suit of the dearest silk in Ireland. O oh, Donal Og, it is I would be better to you than a high, proud, spendthrift lady. I would milk the cow, I would bring help to you, and if you were hard-pressed, I would strike a blow for you. O oh, Achon, and it's not with hunger or with wanting food, or drink, or sleep that I am growing thin, and my life is shortened, but it is the love of a young man has withered me away. It is early in the morning that I saw him coming, going along the road on the back of a horse. He did not come to me. He made nothing of me. And it is on my way home that I cried my fill. When I go by myself to the well of loneliness, I sit down and I go through my trouble, when I see the world and do not see my boy, he that has an amber shade in his hair. It was on that Sunday I gave my love to you, the Sunday that is last before Easter Sunday, and myself on my knees reading the Passion, and my two eyes giving love to you for ever. O oh, I, my mother, give myself to him, and give him all that you have in the world. Get out yourself to ask for alms, and do not come back and forward looking for me. My mother said to me not to be talking with you today, or tomorrow, or on the Sunday. It was a bad time she took for telling me that. It was shutting the door after the house was robbed. My heart is as black as the blackness of the slow, 
or as the black coal that is on the smith's forge, or as the sole of a shoe left in white halls. It was you put that darkness over my life. You have taken the east from me. You have taken the west from me. You have taken what is before me, and what is behind me. You have taken the moon, you have taken the sun from me, and my fear is great that you have taken God from me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Kingdom of God, also known as In No Strange Land, by Francis Thompson, read for LibriVox.org, by Alan Chant, in Tunbridge, Kent, England. The Kingdom of God is within you. O world invisible, we view thee. O world intangible, we touch thee. O world unknowable we know thee, inapprehensible we clutch thee. Does the fish soar to find the ocean, the eagle plunge to find the air, that we ask of the stars in motion if they have rumour of thee there? Not where the whirling systems darken, and our benumbed conceiving soars, the drift of pinions, would we hearken, beats at our own clay-shuttered doors. The angels keep their ancient places, turn but a stone and start a wing. Tis ye, tis your estranged faces that miss the many-splendoured thing. But when so sad thou canst not sadder cry, and upon thy so sore loss shall shine the traffic of Jacob's ladder pitched betwixt heaven and charing cross. Yea, in the night my soul, my daughter, cry, clinging heaven by the hems, and lo, Christ, walking on the water, not of Gennesareth, but Thames. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Like to See It Lap the Miles by Emily Dickinson Read for LibriVox.org by Kim Vibrock on the 23rd of April, 2007 www.soaringmountain.com I like to see it lap the miles and lick the valleys up and stop to feed itself at tanks, and then, prodigious, step around a pile of mountains, and supercilious peer in shanties by the sides of roads, and then a quarry pair to fit its sides and crawl between, complaining all the while in horrid hooting stanza, then chase itself downhill and neigh like Boanerges, then punctual as a star, stop, docile and omnipotent, at its own stable door. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Mathematical Problem in Verse by Benjamin Banneker Read for LibriVox.org by Jill Brenneman A cooper and vintner sat down for a talk, both being so groggy that neither could walk. Says Cooper to Vintner, I'm the first of my trade. There's no kind of vessel but what I have made, and of any shape, sir, just what you will, and of any size, sir, from a ton to a gill. Then, says the vintner, you're the man for me. Make me a vessel if we can agree. The top and the bottom diameter define. To bear that proportion is fifteen to nine. Thirty-five inches are just what I crave. No more and no less in the depth will I have. Just thirty-nine gallons this vessel must hold. Then I will reward you with silver or gold. Give me your promise, my honest old friend. I'll make it tomorrow that you may depend. So the next day the cooper has worked to discharge, soon made the new vessel, but made it too large. 
He took out some staves, which made it too small, and then cursed the vessel, the vintner, and all. He beat on his breast by the powers he swore. He never would work at his trade any more. Now, my worthy friend, find out, if you can, the vessel's dimensions and comfort the man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thanatopsis by William Cullen Bryant Read by Stephen Collins To him who in the love of nature holds communion with her visible forms, she speaks a various language. For his gayer hours she has a voice of gladness, and a smile and eloquence of beauty, and she glides into his darker musings with a mild and healing sympathy that steals away their sharpness ere he is aware. When thoughts of the last bitter hour come like a blight over thy spirit, and sad images of the stern agony, and shroud, and pall, and breathless darkness, and the narrow house, make thee to shudder, and grow sick at heart, go forth under the open sky, and list to nature's teachings, while from all around, earth and her waters, and the depths of air, comes a still voice, Yet a few days, and thee the all-beholding sun shall see no more in all his course. Nor yet in the cold ground, where thy pale form was laid, with many tears, nor in the embrace of ocean, shall exist thy image. Earth, that nourished thee, shall claim thy growth, to be resolved to earth again, and, lost each human trace, surrendering up thy individual being shall go to mix forever with the elements, to be a brother to the insensible rock, and to the sluggish clod, which the rude swain turns with his share, and treads upon. The oak shall send his roots abroad, and pierce thy mould. Yet not to thine eternal resting place shalt thou retire alone, nor couldst thou wish couch more magnificent. Thou shalt lie down with patriarchs of the infant world, with kings, the powerful of the earth, the wise, the good, fair forms, and hoary seers of ages past, all in one mighty sepulchre, the hills rocked ribbed and ancient as the sun, the veil stretching in pensive quietness between, the venerable woods, rivers that move in majesty, and the complaining brooks that make the meadows green, and, poured round all, old ocean's gray and melancholy waste, are but the solemn decorations all of the great tomb of man. The golden sun, the planets, all the infinite hosts of heaven, are shining on the sad abodes of death through the still lapse of ages. All that tread the globe are but a handful to the tribes that slumber in its bosom. Take the wings of morning, and the barracan desert pierce, or lose thyself in the continuous woods where rose the organ, and hears no sound save his own dashings. Yet the dead are there, and millions in those solitudes, since first the flight of years began, have laid them down in their last sleep. The dead reign there alone. So shalt thou rest. And what, if thou withdraw unheeded by the living, and no friend take note of thy departure? All that breathe will share thy destiny. The gay will laugh when thou art gone, the solemn brood of care plod on, and each one as before will chase his favorite phantom. Yet all these shall leave their mirth and their employments, and shall come and make their bed with thee. As the long train of ages glides away, the sons of men, the youth in life's green spring, and he who goes in the full strength of years, matron and maid, and the sweet babe and the gray-headed man, shall one by one be gathered to thy side by those who in their turn shall follow them. So live, that when thy summons comes to join the innumerable caravan that moves to that mysterious realm where each shall take his chamber in the silent halls of death, thou go not like the quarry slave at night, scourged to his dungeon, but, sustained and soothed by the unfaltering trust, Approach thy grave, like one who wraps the drapery of his couch about him, and lies down to pleasant dreams. End of poem.
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Fire Soul by George Charles Selden Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett I sat by my fire in the night, in the night, the darkness grew deeper around me. The last faint gleams of the flickering light faded out of my sight, into night, into night, and the spell of reverie bound me. When sudden I saw in the vanishing light a phantom hovering o'er me, it wavered an instant in its flight, then faded from sight, into night, into night, and left but the darkness before me. And yet so swift and sudden its flight, so deep the shadows before me, I knew not whether a beckoning sprite had glimmered white in the night in the night, or only a thought sped o'er me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Flea by John Donne, read for LibriVox.org by David Barnes. Mark but this flea, and mark in this how little that which thou deniest me is. It sucked me first, and now sucks thee, and in this flea our two bloods mingled be. Thou know'st that this cannot be said a sin, nor shame, nor loss of maidenhead. Yet this enjoys before it woo, And pampered swells with one blood made of two, And this, alas, is more than we would do. Oh, stay three lives in one flea spare, Where we almost, yea, more than married are. This flea is you and I, And this our marriage bed and marriage temple is. Though parents grudge and you, where met and cloistered in these living walls of jet. Though use make you apt to kill me, let not to that self-murder added be, and sacrilege, three sins in killing three. Cruel and sudden, hast thou since purpled thy nail in blood of innocence? Wherein could this flea guilty be, except in that drop which it sucked from thee? Yet thou triumphst, and sayest that thou find'st not thyself nor me the weaker now. Tis true, then learn how false fears be. Just so much honour, when you yield'st to me, will waste, as this flea's death took life from thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thomas of the Light Heart by Owen Seaman, read by Howard Dratch for LibriVox.org. Facing the guns, he jokes as well as any judge upon the bench. Between the crash of shell and shell, his laughter rings along the trench. He seems immensely tickled by a projectile which he calls a black Mariah. He whistles down the day-long road, and when the chilly shadows fall, and heavier hangs the weary load, is he downhearted? Not at all. Tis then he takes a light and airy view of the tedious route to Tipperary. His songs are not exactly hymns. He never learned them in the choir, and yet they brace his dragging limbs, although they miss the sacred fire, although his choice and cherished gems do not include the watch upon the Thames. He takes to fighting as a game. He does no talking through his hat of holy missions. All the same, he has his faith, be sure of that. He'll not disgrace his sporting breed, nor play what isn't cricket. There's his creed. End of poem. This poem is in the public domain. To Edgar Allan Poe by Sarah Helen Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake If thy sad heart pining for human love, in its earth solitude, grew dark with fear, lest the high sun of heaven itself should prove powerless to save from that phantasmal sphere wherein thy spirit wandered, if the flowers that pressed around thy feet 
seemed but to bloom in lone Gethsemanes through starless hours, when all who loved had left thee to thy doom. Oh, yet believe that in that hollow vale where thy soul lingers, waiting to attain so much of heaven's sweet grace as shall avail to lift its burden of remorseful pain, my soul shall meet thee, and its heaven forego till God's great love on both one hope, one heaven bestowed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wayfarer by Stephen Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Zachary Brewster Geis. In memory of Donald Geis. The Wayfarer, perceiving the pathway to truth, was struck with astonishment. It was thickly grown with weeds. Ha, huh, he said, I see that none has passed here in a long time. Later he saw that each weed was a singular knife. Well, he mumbled at last, doubtless there are other roads. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. What think you I take my pen in hand? By Walt Whitman, recorded for LibriVox.org. What think you I take my pen in hand to record, the battleship perfect mottled majestic that I saw pass in the offing today, under full sail, the splendors of the past day, or the splendor of night that envelops me, or the vaunted glory and growth of the great city spread around me? No, but I record of two simple men I saw today, on the pier in the midst of the crowd, parting the parting of dear friends. The one to remain hung on the other's neck and passionately kissed him, while the one to depart tightly pressed the one to remain in his arms. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When I Heard the Learned Astronomer by Walt Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake when I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures, were ranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I sitting heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon, unaccountable, I became tired and sick till rising and gliding out I wandered off by myself. In the mystical moist night air, and from time to time, looked up in perfect silence at the stars. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.